guys, how are you? I hope you're all doing very well. This afternoon I'm going to be doing a movie review. This movie is a horror film from the United States, English language, released in the year 2016, directed by Mickey Keating, and this film is called Carnage Park. So Carnage Park is about two bank robbers. They've just held up a rural bank, and now they're on the run. So they actually take a hostage with them. It's a, a, a woman who they um, shove into the back of their, into the trunk, and they basically take off. So one of these robbers has been shot in the process, and he's actually died in the car. And so the remaining robber, he basically parks the car in a, in a, remote, a remote place after losing the police, he dumps the body, he takes the woman out of the trunk, puts her in the front seat and they head to Mexico. So uh, all of a sudden their back tyre is shot out by an unknown presence and so it actually appears that someone has a sniper rifle and it's aimed at this car. So the bank robber is going uh, crazy, he ends up being shot and killed which leaves the woman to fight on her own. So it turns out that the land they've encountered is private land owned by a gun nut who calls this land Carnage Park where he picks off unsuspecting people in a game of cat and mouse. So whether or not this woman can survive the nightmare she's, uh, she's about to embark on, something you're going to have to find out for yourself because that's as far as I'm going with my synopsis. Now my thoughts on Carnage Park. Mickey Keating is a very, very unique director and I actually really like his work and although his films that I've seen in the past haven't really won me over so much, I can appreciate the fact that he's a genuine horror fan. And what I mean by that is that a lot of his movies, he does pay homage to movies of yesteryear. For example, in his other movie called uh, Ritual, that I'll review a little bit later, there were reminiscent qualities of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. In fact, there was a scene in a truck where they had the same song that was played in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So it actually feels like he's dropping in little subtle hints of films that have actually inspired him. So I think it's too much of a coincidence not to really uh, to think that he, he is inspired by classic horror films. And so he's a classic sort of horror fan uh, before actually becoming a director. So it shows that he's making movies to base his style and to cater for genuine horror fans instead of watering it down for the masses in mainstream horror. So Mickey Keating, he does have a very particular style. And in this film, it reminded me once again of Texas Chainsaw Massacre and in the very desolate sort of barren landscape where the saturated sort of colouring makes you feel the sweat, makes you feel the thirst that these characters are going through. And the desperate situation that this female is going through, I thought, was relatively surreal. I thought this is a very bizarre film in, in some of the uh, events that take place. And so you, it feels like you've got a surreal nightmare, but then it also feels like you've got a classic cat and mouse game. So I really like that aspect, and I, I really like the swirling sort of elements that Mickey Keating throws in there that have inspired him. So it also reminis uh, reminiscent qualities of The Hills Have Eyes, based on the landscape. And it also has other qualities of Tar uh, Quentin Tarantino with the soundtrack. I thought the soundtrack track plays a big part in giving you a very unique sort of odd feeling that the film has. And so you've also got Pat Healy who acts as the bad guy. I really like Pat Healy and I will say that the bad guy is very insane and he's doing things that are very horrific and it's quite horrifying. But I'll go into a little bit of a problem that I have with the villain a little bit later. But then I also thought the acting from the others was actually fairly decent. I thought the script was um, captivating. It wasn't perfect but it's certainly well written. And so I, I could actually get into the situation. Uh, but the other problem I have with the film is in the actual characters and what actually happens and how generic the actual formula is. But overall I just thought it was a very bizarre sort of film and it's a movie that's not going to appeal to everybody but a very select few and I appreciate films like that because Mickey Keating is making films for his very select fans as opposed to making it, marketing it and trying to make as much money as possible. So this is why I really like independent horror is because they've got no choice but to actually aim it at a very select few fans because they don't have have the budget, they don't have the CGI, they don't have the paranormal ghosts in order to make it as far as mainstream and I think that's a blessing in disguise. Uh, so um, yeah, I mean it is a very interesting film, it's a very nasty sort of film but my problem with this movie is that yes it does have very likeable qualities but I thought the characters were very, uh, yeah, they weren't very in depth, I mean they, they weren't very memorable. I thought the main character, I didn't really care if she lived or died, although there were some very good suspenseful moments, you're more interested in the suspense, you're more interested about putting yourself in her shoes as opposed to actually caring for her. So I thought that her character it could have been a little bit more scary if she was actually a likeable person, but you don't know anything about her, and so basically it's a fuzzy face in the background, it's cannon fodder. If she died in the first second, you really wouldn't care about it. So I just couldn't invest my time in her character, which is what I think the film really needed. Then you've got Pat Healy, who plays the bad guy. Now he's very much over the top. It actually feels like he's having a lot of fun playing this character, but he's so far 
far out of the top, over the top that it's a caricature sort of cartoon villain, and that it, it, he's got that over the top laugh, and you feel like, hey, you're kind of exaggerating. It's kind of like what happened in Wolf Creek 2 with Mick Taylor. He was a great villain in the first film, but the second villain was a caricature. It was like a spook. It was like a parody of himself, and so it, it made a laughing stock of that character. And this movie feels the same. It's got that sort of Wolf Creek 2 vibe to it, where it's not taking itself as seriously as it, you know, it as it really should have. And on Wolf Creek was a straight out sort of horror comedy, whereas this movie's not. But that character felt like is a character out of a horror comedy. It felt like that over exaggerated cartoon villain that you get in a lot of films of a very light hearted nature. So his character didn't really feel like it fit in. And because he's exaggerating it, you can disconnect yourself from the situation. It's not as realistic as it wants to be because of that caricature sort of nature that the whole film has. So and apart from you know, the characters, you also got very generic moments. You know, if you've seen cat and mouse films before, you have seen this, and you know what's going to happen. You know who's going to survive it. And right at the end, I thought, okay, well, it, it's not a terrible ending, but it wasn't a great ending. I actually would have liked it if it went down a slightly different path. But there are generic moments, as I said. There are cartoon sort of caricature elements the movie has that does prevent it from being as serious as it wants to be. But there are very surreal moments. There are very, yeah, you know, it's a very strange film. There are some very nasty moments, and I thought the saturated sort of color really reminded me of films from the past so if you are a fan of that kind of stuff I would highly recommend you check out Carnage Park it's not a terrible film and it's a clear uh, indication that Mickey Keating is a very good director and he's one to look out for and I'm quickly becoming a big fan of his but this movie it just felt like yes it had very good ideas but underneath it didn't really have enough to really carry it to the finish line so overall for Carnage Park I'm going to give it two and a half stars still going to recommend it but I was just a little bit disappointed I thought it could have been a little bit better Alright guys, that's it for my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Till next time you watch your movies and I'll see you later.